it's a uh, an important day for us today. We're getting final grading, so they're moving the equipment in. So there's a uh, big front end loader. The bulldozer's already here, bringing the dump truck in. So the basic plan is to take as much soil as possible from that area there. So that entire large space and actually take the most of that and fill it in over here. So it's going to be uh, filling in this space so we end up with the slope from the, the house uh, out this way, getting it as level as we can. And then leveling it off around the house, putting a swale from the corner of our property. So right here where you see the red post. Assuming you can see it, yeah, okay. Uh, all the way down to the back, following the post that are there, and then covering over the, uh, the land that's here. All right. All right. So going around the back here, the uh, septic bed that's there. So that we'll end up with this whale on this side. Having some problems uh, holding on to the dog at the same time as uh, doing a little bit of this uh, video. We we uh, uh, picked it up. Okay. We've got uses for it. Okay, no, that's fine. I just didn't know if it was laying there. I just didn't want them driving over. Yep. No, it's all gone. Okay. Thanks. So this will end up being filled in as well, and uh, a swale going down the side uh, will actually occur there as well, so all the way down to the corner. Um, so here's the big bulldozer. So the garage is not going to be worked on today. All right. So let's see what happens uh, today and then see what happens on Friday to plaid the inside of the garage. still pretty low in here. So I, I, I wonder if we're going to be able to take some of that stuff. Some of what stuff? Some of the topsoil that's in there and fill in here. Well, I thought the whole plan was to use the topsoil that we can here and then we fill that hole in later, like next summer. We fill well, yeah, he's already, Darren was already talking to me about uh, fill, yeah. you know, coming from other places. And I said, sure, yes. Yeah. We can tell Ron the same thing, right? Yep. By the way, it is much warmer in the basement now. Well, it's up to 19 degrees too, huh? That was pretty quick then. You thought it would be... A couple of days.
But the house is so well insulated now, huh? I guess, and that's maybe the dry, the hair dryer test. Yep. So, how good of a swale is there here now? Not bad. Yeah. But that's what we saw right there. So if Rachel's tiny house will have to go more here. Yep. Like Tiny house, you probably have a deck or whatever, and then we have a, our fire pit here, kind of thing, or we have a fire pit here. We can have that other one up there, <coughs> the propane one up there. Yeah, up, up top. Yeah. yeah. But we could have a fire pit here. The one thing that I'm a little concerned with up up there is well, the wind, and how do you protect it from the wind? Well, they, you can't really. Yeah. Yeah, but anything that's up there is going to be exposed to the wind, right? So, uh, as soon as you're finished with it, you have to hunker it down to make sure that it's not going to be blowing away. You mean like chairs, tipping, and all that kind of stuff? You just have to get heavy. Yeah. Heavy Adirondack chairs or something. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and I or think like if we end up with a well. I, I was thinking if we ended up with panels uh, for the railing, that would cut down some of the wind, uh, at least, you know, in the lower section. But we were not planning on going with panels, were we? Of glass panels? Yeah. What do you think, Albs? What do you think? Well, he was running around, he was grabbing sticks and... Oh, he's been running around out here? When I... they were... they were all talking when I went uh, out <coughs> and talked about the well. So the equipment wasn't running? No, no, no. They were all taking breaks. I think it's kind of interesting back here because we've never really had an opportunity to walk back here. And now we will. Yeah. Okay. Hey girl. So, um, contractor won't be here until Monday. It looks like there's more soil than uh, he thought, and looks like he's just loving it out at this point. have changed substantively out here. Wow, I like it. Should we walk around? 
What? Shall we walk around a second? Sure. Just checking all the chickens. Have you hey, seen Alps? any green jet today? Uh, no. Fish are ever nice, huh? We've gone quite a ways back, in the back here. This is so much better, goodness. What do you think of it? It's good, yeah. Let's, let's go there as soon as he backs up. Nicely sloping away here. So that, I, I said it'd be okay because it, it'll probably end up in water in here in the spring. Yeah, yeah. My hobby tree is still here. What? My hobby tree. Hobby house tree. Yeah, I, I told him to leave that. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. And then we can build the bridge across from here to there, right? That'll work out. Surprising that he took down the uh, the berm as much as he did, but uh, I'm okay with it. Yeah, that's fine. I was thinking that maybe the blueberries, maybe we could plant them in here. Do they, do they need... Well, they need sun. Yeah? Moisture? Because it's going to be... I mean, it's not going to be wet in here, but it'll be... It's lower. Well, no, it's not. That's lower, but this is not. But that's... This is not. And the soil's not bad here. The soil's good. Yeah. And we don't have to put as much heat on us. Much digging, it's nice and soft. <laughs> but I can see us trying to dig over there or on there. And yeah, tough. very tough. Yeah, it's not bad. So you can have a blueberry patch in here. A blueberry patch right outside our door. Kind of. <laughs> put everything back again, huh? Okay, the equipment is still not uh, departed, but uh, the job is done. So let me give you a tour of what we ended up with now. So they regraded the driveway from the road, put uh, a topping, top dressing on, on the, uh, the gravel, and they did a much better job of finishing off the edge here all the way to the side of the garage and so now we have a gently sloped section away from the road and from the driveway and uh, so you can see that it uh, it will direct the water fairly directly into the swale itself which is dry at this point, but uh, come spring, we know that it will be filled up again uh, for a couple of months. And so the berm has been pushed back 
it is now starting here small little section around this tree it's a shrub tree but uh, Trisha wants to have this section here as you can tell from the earliest segment uh, Trisha's thinking about planting our blueberry plants that she just picked up yesterday um, in this area in this section and we've got another scrub willow tree of some some kind silax uh, that uh, is in this area and then we're going to be putting a bridge across this section from here across to the other side so we've got a second entrance to get into the, uh, the garden section of uh, our property so I don't know exactly where we put the bridge but uh, somewhere in this area moving from the cleared off area to behind the trailer somewhere in there so maybe 15 20 feet or so <coughs> And then the berm starts again in this area. So it's got a, a sloped off area to the back meadow that we haven't been able to access prior to this. Uh, this is actually very welcome as far as I'm concerned because um, we now end up with getting rid of a root, uh, an area that we can start to make use of, uh, putting the the chickens back here, uh, etc. And maybe in the future, a couple of sheep. Um, and we'll be able to actually access some of these trees and clear some of it out, uh, particularly the ones that have been falling down or that uh, are in danger of falling down. So there's one over there. You can see it's leaning quite heavily. Um, some of the, the more um, Endangered trees have actually already fallen. You can see one in the foreground here that's uh, fallen down as uh, a consequence of the windstorm that we had earlier in May or June. Um, so now we've got this leveled off section. The, the four stakes that you're seeing up there are still from the septic bed so that we know exactly where they are. You can see the property outlines as well. So they're the stakes with the orange tips. There's one over there, and there's one over here, and there's another one in the corner itself. Let's just walk back into the corner, because I don't think any of you have actually seen the space back here. It, you can notice as soon as you start walking in here that the ground is quite soft. We suspect that in this area here, that there's a spring or a set of springs. Uh, don't see any evidence of it right now, but that might be as a con consequence of very little uh, rain has been accumulating over the last few months. It's been relatively dry, and as a consequence of that, this section right up to the fence, the fence is uh, the boundary of our property, um, so essentially we're in this area so the property line goes from there down to here and that's what the thing is right there so you can see that there's also a ribbon sitting in the, in the tree and the uh the split rail fence is in our property as well so over here it runs the split rail fence it runs almost directly to the road itself out in front of the garden section. So all of this is our property here, this entire meadow area that we can make use of. And uh, as you may have heard earlier, we had a little discussion uh, with Patricia about where Rachel might uh, situate her um, tiny home when she gets it, if she gets it built. And that might be between here and uh, the well head that you can see up there. Quite frequently uh, during the spring and summer you will see wild turkeys roosting in these trees. Uh, I don't know where they go in the winter. Somewhere nearby where there's 
lots of food and shelter, I suspect. But during the, uh, the summer months, they're up in the trees. You can see them in the evening and uh, through the night. So I'm just walking towards where we eventually hope to have a pond, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, that'll be in this area up here. Quite, quite soft in here. And then you start getting into the, the felled trees, branches and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, a little bit on the dense side, so we need to have some active work to get it cleared off. A few sheep would certainly go a long ways to help us with that. All right, let's walk up back towards the house. And you can see that there are poplar trees that have started growing in here. You can see them spread throughout. So these are pioneer plants trees that are growing into areas that are cleared and eventually they would give way to other trees and after that oaks and maples which is the dominant uh, um, species that you'll find in uh, the section of central Ontario so that would be the climax forest what they've been able to accomplish the back of the house so they filled in the section under the siding it's all in place by the way that tap is not connected it's not going anywhere hopefully early next week we'll have the plumber in to connect not only that one but also the other tap that's over here so you'll see that the grating has gone right up to the side of the house and the well now is uh, very distinct you can see it we'll have to burn off this wood when they finish off the uh, inside the garage the power post is now in place and you can see that it's um, well entrenched and there will be a second uh, meter being placed on here when uh, Ontario Hydro does their thing to connect our solar array. The solar array is uh, complete up on the roof and this is the front section and we hope to actually put some kind of cover crop possibly clover or something along those lines in this area with sprinkling of trees we'll put trees around the power pole and uh, around the well head so that uh, it'll be a little bit disguised and they'll have to grow up uh, over time to hide all that space and finally the uh, the driveway has been uh, <clears throat> even the parking area has been re reset a little bit so it's much more level at this point in time and uh, uh, it'll be much more pleasant to actually drive on and park things on uh, in the very near future so this area here is still primarily going to be left as it is. We are not going to get into mowing the grass, etc. Um, so you'll see that our neighbor does a little bit of that uh, for us, but uh, we aren't going to do um, much more of that. Uh, the trees that you see uh, with the stakes in the background uh, are on our property. So they're in the grass that the neighbor is mowing, but uh, there are trees. Whereas these trees here are after the stakes and they are no longer in our property. Um, so we'll 
hope to uh, fill in more of this area uh, with more trees so that uh... <laughs> chickens are really messy and they do not conserve food at all. Anyway, so there's there's some trees that we've planted already in here, and hopefully uh, most of them are going to uh, take, etc. Right, I think that gives you a good overview as to what has been done in terms of uh, final landscaping. And uh, so next week we hope to have the uh, inside of the garage skinned. Um, and uh, the garage door is coming in and a bunch of details on the inside that need to be completed yet. So we're moving in that direction and hopefully we'll be uh, able to actually complete all of that uh, next week. Um, we have had one major move, even though it took very little time. Uh, the heater in the floor in the house is now working. Um, so it, the, it brought up the slab over the last 24 hours or so to uh, 20 degrees and uh, it will keep the rest of the house uh, much warmer um, than it has been in the last uh, couple of weeks um, even though it'll be getting colder on the outside so the slab is now heated and it is our main radiant heat for the rest of the house uh, my only hope is that uh, it doesn't get too hot in my office etc Anyways, we'll uh, get this posted and uh, talk to you soon.